Ferruccio Lamborghini was a successful businessman who made his fortune building tractors for farm use and eating systems. He owned a few Ferraris and, as the story goes, was not too happy with his breaking down too often for his liking. Apparently, it was a clutch problem that didn't seem to bother Enzo much when Ferruccio confronted him about this constant issue. After this little feud, Enzo told Ferruccio that he should stick with tractor manufacturing, and on this note, Ferruccio Lamborghini went on to build his own sports car company and set his sight on building a better engineer sports car. Thank heaven for those little ego trips. In May 1963, Automobili Lamborghini SPA was founded in Santa Gada Bolognese, and that same year, a prototype was built by coach builder Sargiotto based on a Franco Scaglione design who used to work at Bertoni. Engineers Paolo Stanzani and Giampaolo Dallara have been recruited from Ferrari after the 1961 Ferrari's Palace Revolt or Great Walkout, as well as master engineer Giotto Bizzarini, who developed the Ferrari 250 series up to the 250 GTO. Pizzarini was asked to develop the first Lamborghini V12 through his company Societa Autostar, who just left ATS after Carlo Chiri got his way with building a V8 for the ATS 2500 instead of Pizzarini V12 project. Consequently, Pizzarini 3.5 liter or 213 cubic inch V12 racing engine with 360 horsepower at 8000 RPM got retained by Lamborghini, but it would need to be detuned to be street usable. At the same time, the original Franco Scaglione 350 GTV naive design would also have to be revised to appeal to a high-end and demanding clientele. So after massive revision, the first Lamborghini production car rose out of Lamborghini's factory in Santa Gata in March 1964 as the Lamborghini 350 GT. Redesigned and built by Touring, with its Superleggera technique consisting of laying aluminium panels over a thin tubular structure to minimize weight. The production 350 GT sheds its pop-up headlights with a pair of oval lamps encased in a protuberant curved fender due to its low hood lines allowed by the use of side draft carburetors. The windshield adorned a single wiper and was slightly panoramic with arch posts. The rear quarter windows and the rear window were generous, with thin pillars all around giving the 350 GT a fantastic all-around visibility. The rear fenders just had a thin raised longitudinal edge matching the pattern on the front fenders. The flat trunk lid and rear window layout was reminiscent of the Aston Martin DB4, 5 and 6, also created by Touring and much loved by Ferruccio Lamborghini. To finish with Lamborghini's first newborn, the rear split bumper also followed the front bumper design and in a perfect Italian fashion, four exhaust pipes and a set of Borani wire wheels were adopted and give the 350 GT a nice classic look, especially with the rear squared off wheel arches. With its long doors, entering the 350 GT wasn't a problem and once inside, leather was found everywhere, including on the dashboard. Two big Jezer dials were placed behind a three-branch wooden Nardi steering wheel with a small pressure oil gauge in the middle. The center console also received four small dials and all were surrounded by chrome bezel as well. Still on the center console was a cluster of light and toggle switches with no markings adding to the clean interior layout, while details such as elegantly shaped door handles and other finishing touches set Lamborghini apart from Ferrari. Interestingly enough, the prototype GTV had a third rear middle seat right behind the front seats, which made it into the very few first production 350 GTs only. Dallara was responsible for detuning the 4-cam 3.5-liter V12 engine by slightly reducing it from 213 cubic inch to 211, lowering the compression and by doing without the GTV's dry sump. It was then fitted with six side draft Weber carburetors and produced 280 horsepower at 6,500 RPM to a 5-speed ZF gearbox while Ferrari used a 4-speed unit on its model at the time. Also, the all-independent wishbone suspension were a modern departure and again this gave the 350 GT an edge over Ferraris by having a better handling and controlled smooth ride over poor road surfaces. 
For stopping power, Lamborghini was also once more ahead of Ferrari by using gearling disc brakes all around, making Ferruccio's first creation a well-thought-out, mature masterpiece. Performance was also of the first order, with 6.7 seconds to reach 62 miles per hour from a standstill, while the top speed was 155 miles per hour or 250 km per hour. In 1965, an entering model here to bring the gap between the upcoming 400 GT 2 Plus 2 was introduced. Simply known as the 400 GT, this model had a larger 4 liter or 240 cubic inch V12 with 320 horsepower at 6,500 RPM, with some models featuring overall headlights or the upcoming twin round headlights surrounded by a heavy chrome trim on each side. Out of only 23 400 GT built, only three were built using Touring's Superleggera technique, while the rest started the steel construction that would follow on future Lamborghini models. Ferruccio Lamborghini's first exotic sports car was a great success, even if the general design can look odd at times with those overexposed headlights due to his low hood line. But the 350 GT is quite still harmonious and flows nicely with the compact size of its rounded curved body. Only 120 Lamborghini 350 GTs have been built between 1964 and 1966, while another 23 interim 400 GTs were built in 1965 and 66. Out of these numbers, two chassis were sent to Zagato in 1965 to create the 3500 GTZ and 4000 GTZ. That same year, two more chassis were built as a Spider under the name 350 GTS, but as the GTZ, the GTS never made it into production. Unlike later on testosterone and ego-driven mid-engine boy toys, the 350 and 400 series were mature and civilized sports car with a certain practicality and common sense dedicated by the need for achieving greatness, a philosophy that wouldn't last long in Santa Gata.